Hello everyone and welcome inside the CIF. I'm your host Richard Tiemann and this is your Game of the Week preview for week number 8 of the 2021 CIF season. Where has the time gone? It seems like it's just flown right by and we are over the midway point of the regular season. The playoff picture still a bit unclear, but the competition has really turned up. In fact, we had three great matchups this last weekend. All six teams were in action and it started off with an upset as the Wichita Force take down the Sioux City Bandits to hand them their third straight loss, final score of 49-40. Then, shortly after, we had the Omaha Beef Mount an epic comeback against the Wyoming Mustangs in Gillette. Final score there, 49-21, 37 unanswered points. And finally, your Mother's Day special was the Salina Liberty continuing their pursuit of a perfect season over the Dodge City Law. Final score, 62-34. So week number eight, we do have a couple of great matchups for you, but it's all about the game of the week, which is the Wichita Force taking on the Omaha Beef, both coming off big wins and both needing these next several in order to help secure their spot in the postseason. I welcome the quarterback from the Wichita Force and reigning Offensive Player of the Week, Corey Murphy. And for the Omaha Beef, I welcome linebacker Malcolm McCoy, who is part of that big defensive shutout in the second half against the Mustangs. So let's go ahead and preview this game of the week. All right, fans, first up, representing the away team, he is the quarterback for the Wichita Force from Delaware State and the reigning offensive player of the week for the CIF, Corey Murphy. Mr. Murphy, welcome. How are you? Doing good, doing good. It's uh, exciting to have you guys be kind of in the news recently. I know that it was a slow start for Wichita as far as the season. Uh, There was a few things that had to be rescheduled as far as games, but now you guys are in the win column. Huge win over the Sioux City Bandits. How are you feeling this week? Uh, We're definitely feeling good. Uh, It's good to get on the win column, you know, and get one for us. And we're just hoping to build off this momentum. So this last game, you had, I think, over 200 yards total offense, both through the air and on the ground. Then you had five touchdowns, four were passing, I think all four to a different receiver, and then one rushing touchdown. I mean, when did it finally start clicking for you? Uh, We had a slow start. You know, uh, we were scoreless through the first quarter, but uh, we started getting a couple touchdowns in the second uh, quarter. But then right after half, you know, I feel like we just scored every drive, so you know, this took us a second to get going. We're still trying to get a game where we play all four quarters up to our full potential. But uh, second half, we really started getting rolling. Yeah, and you guys uh, against Sioux City, that was a tough opponent. Obviously, it was the upset of the week. But for you guys, I mean, I, I keep saying that you can't expect teams that start poorly to perform poorly throughout the whole season. Like, everybody's going to get better. You guys are going to find your rhythm. You're going to build rapport with each other. Uh, were you surprised at the outcome? Uh, no, I knew going in that uh, we were a completely different team from the first time we played them. We had some great additions on the line, Ricky and Steve, my center, my guard. Uh, you know, Clint has been there from the beginning. And, uh, you know, we have our new OC, Coach Walters. Uh, you know, and we've just been game planning. And, and the biggest thing, even after our last loss with Dodge City, it was a close game. We just try to improve on any mistakes we've had every week. And for you, what do you think has been your biggest point of, I guess, weakness, where the mistakes have been the most and you guys have improved on those? Uh, Well, you know, that's that's the thing. It doesn't come from one spot. You know, everyone at every position has about three plays, you know, each week that it's like, man, that was your moment, you know, And, and we all just focus on when the play comes to you, make your play and just and just do your job. So uh, it, nothing in particular, just as a whole, we just got to focus up in uh, every scenario and try and limit our errors. And now you guys will take it on the road. You will visit Omaha to take on the Beef. The Beef are two wins in a row, both on the road. They finally get to come back home for a change. First time in three weeks that they will be at uh, Ralston Arena, the slaughterhouse. And you guys are looking to carry that same energy from a big upset over Sioux City into their house. What kind of game is this for you at this point in the season? Every game is a must win. We go out every week with the intention to win. So um, we know we got a great opponent uh, with the beef and it's definitely a game that we want to go out and win and uh, show to the league that, hey, we're here and it's a different team from the beginning of the season. 
Now for you, you've been in the game for a while. What's been the biggest challenge for you coming back after having a whole year off and trying to get back into the game and find your rhythm again? A lot of these guys during the pandemic, uh, we're staying in, you know, lifting. We were trying to keep our bodies fresh. But the biggest thing every year, especially on the offense side of the ball, is just finding a rhythm and gelling together as an offense. You know, understanding like, who has what on what assignment, who's going to break a certain route where, what are we going to do to adjust to this coverage, to that coverage. And so that's just the biggest thing that we've honed in over the last few weeks. Now, as I mentioned, you had four touchdowns through the air to four different receivers. And normally, you know, a game where you guys have a pretty hot hand on offense, there's also a pretty hot set of hands on the receiving end where, you know, you and one other, maybe two other receivers are really clicking and on point. But this time it seemed like you were trying to spread the love. Was that the intent or have you just built that well of rapport with your receivers? That's the thing, too. Uh, when I go back each play, you know, you got to read it. And, and I, I can I, I kind of connect football and life together. You know, not one perspective is the same every play. You can't just lock on to one guy. You know, it, it depends on the coverage on who's going to get the ball. You know, maybe uh, um, the down and distance. If I if I go ahead and take the look deep, you know, I'm probably going to do that early. You know, so. I don't really uh, uh, lock on to any one guy. So every week, you know, it depends on who's going to be the hot hand. Like what position are you at today? You know, it, 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 are we hitting this play? What coverage are they giving us? You know, uh, um, Sioux City, they're giving us a lot of cover two out of the three. So that's why my running backs had uh, um, two. We had two touchdowns at the running back position, you know. So it, it, it's going to change from week to week, depending on what the defense is doing and what we got in our game plan. Awesome. Well, I guess the big question then is, as the reigning offensive player of the week for the CIF, what's it going to take to beat the beef this weekend? Um, the same thing it's going to take every week. You know, we got to limit our turnovers. Uh, we got to we got to tighten up on our penalties. Uh, we we definitely have a, a few penalties, a lot more than we'd like. Uh, you know, so we just got to go in there with the same intensity from last week and just try and limit our turnovers and limit our errors in general and execute every play that's given to us. All right. Well, I do want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you joining me here on the program this week. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Once again, he is the reigning offensive player of the week for the CIF quarterback of the Wichita Force, Corey Murphy, and they take on the Omaha Beef this Saturday, May 15th. You take care and best of luck this weekend. All right, fans, next up, representing the home team, he is a proud member of that Omaha B-Fence who pitched a second-half shutout against the Wyoming Mustangs this last week. Please welcome linebacker for the Omaha Beef, Malcolm McCoy. Welcome, Malcolm. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's always a pleasure to be here. You know, um, I'm good. Everything's cool. Well, this is our Game of the Week preview. The Beef are a part of that game once again, but I think well-deserved because you guys have had two big back-to-back -back road wins at a point in the season that, I, I mean, I, I don't know what would have happened had you guys lost either or both of those games, but I'm sure that <laughs> you and I may not be talking right now because I'm sure Coach Jones probably would have overhauled the whole team. But uh you guys have been victorious. You guys are 500 now as far as CIF opponents go, and then you're 3-2 and two overall for the season. How are you feeling right now? Man, Rich, I'm feeling great. Honestly, I feel like uh, we finally got to that point where we can play together as a team on all three phases, you know, offense, defense, and special teams. Of course, there are still some points where we can improve, you know, um, unless we're a perfect team, there are always points where we can, uh, you know, uh, get better at, but um, as a team, I feel like we're all we're all hitting on all cylinders. We're doing good. Uh, we have the great the, the right mindset as well. So I mean, I'm just excited to see uh, you know how we do this week and going forward. Well, it's been a while since you guys have been back home at the Slaughterhouse at Ralston Arena. In fact, uh, you know, uh, almost a month. There was the bye week, the two back-to-back -back road games. But the last time that you played there was not the outcome you wanted. It was against Sioux City, but you did get them back in their house the next scheduled game that you guys had after that bye. But you did have a win to start off the season against a non-league opponent. But now you guys are going to try to bring that energy from the last two games to the Slaughterhouse. On the same note, though, Wichita coming off a huge upset over Sioux City, speaking of which, and they're going to be trying to bring that same energy there. What do you guys have to do in order to match that kind of mode and mentality that they're going to be bringing with them? Um, coming off of a win themselves, they're going to be, you know, uh, super high energy. 
um, they know that playing on the road is always a challenge. So um, we're definitely expecting them to come out, um, you know, out the gate, just really high energy and uh, super strong trying to overwhelm us. But like I said before, just simply knowing that we what we have to do, um, I, I trust our game plan, uh, both on offense and defense. Um, it's just a matter of not letting the moment be too big. Yeah, I agree. Can't dwell on anything negative, but there's always going to be room for improvement. And I think you guys defensively have really found your identity. And I know that Drew Jackson, your quarterback, has started to build rapport, uh, great rapport with multiple receivers on the team. It used to just be him and Pargo. Tyler Jones has really stepped up. Deshaun Jones out of the backfield. Anthony Jones Jr. I mean, all the Joneses of the uh, Omaha beef have really uh, hit their stride right now. And you'd like to see that continue this weekend uh, hosting the Wichita Forest, who also happen to be hitting their stride offensively. What do you have to do in order to match what they're going to try to bring offensively on the defense? Uh, me being the linebacker, uh, quote unquote, the captain of the defense, um, just knowing where I am at all times in relation to my players, uh, well, my teammates, I should say, um, is super big, you know. Um, oftentimes as a linebacker, and I can probably speak for a couple of my teammates as well, um, you know, we feel like every play is ours to make, you know. Although uh, we do bring that aggressive mentality to the, to the field and we do want to make every play um, when it's, when it's uh, possible for us, we do have to uh, trust our teammates and not, like I said before, deviate from the plan because we feel like, you know, oh, I can make this play or I can, you know, just step out of bounds a little bit, step out of line and, uh, you know, do something to help the team. Because ultimately, if you don't follow what the game plan has uh, suited for us, then that's when we start to, you know, mess up and, and have those lapses in our, our defense and as a team as a whole. So what does this game mean for you guys? Ultimately, it's an opportunity to get to the ranking where we want to be in the league at the moment. And um, also just, just uh, also like for the, for the fans, um, any home game is super big for us, but um, you know, uh, Omaha is a great city, has great people, a great fan base. And for us to actually bring another win home for them, that would just be amazing. All right. And the last one, the obvious question, you know it, what's it going to take to get the W? And it's going to take a few things, uh, just that grit, determination, um, I would definitely say focus. And um, like I said before, just being, staying calm, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a tough game uh, mentally and physically. There's no need to, to make it any tougher for ourselves by overthinking anything. So just staying calm and uh, like I said, trusting a game plan is something that that'll help us tremendously. Well, it seems like it's going to be the Wichita offense against that nasty Omaha defense. You guys are hoping to continue to go scoreless, you know, as far as the opponent goes into this next game. And uh, it should be an exciting one. I'm very ready for this matchup, especially at a loud and rowdy slaughterhouse. So, hey, man, I want to thank you so much again for your time. I really appreciate it. Of course. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. All right, he is once again Malcolm McCoy, linebacker for that beef fence that you guys may have seen on the highlights a time or two. And they will take on the Wichita Force this Saturday at Ralston Arena, a.k.a. the Slaughterhouse. So, hey, Malcolm, again, thank you and best of luck this weekend. Thank you so much, Rich. I appreciate you having me, man. And one more big thank you to Corey Murphy and Malcolm McCoy for joining me on this edition of the Inside the CIF Game of the Week preview. Week 8 should be a good slate of competition, but only four of the six teams will be in action as the game of the week will be Saturday, May 15th. That, again, is the Wichita Force taking on the Omaha Beef at the Ralston Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. Kickoff is set for 6.30 p.m., and then the Salina Liberty will face off against the Sioux City Bandits once again this season. Kickoff for that is 7.05 p.m. Central Time. If you cannot attend either of these games, make sure that you watch live on the CIF Network channel on YouTube.com. So who will be the game of the week next time? You'll just have to tune in and find out. Until then, I'm Richard Tiemann, and this is Inside the CIF. Mm-hmm.